Greetings. My name is Melvin Jones and I am the ministering evangelist of the Southwest Church of Christ located at 380 Franklin Avenue in Hartford, Connecticut. And I'd like to welcome you all to our YouTube channel. And I pray that this message will enrich your life and cause you to make a radical change for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thanks again for tuning in and may God bless you. Sunday morning. And, you know, I'm leaving Thursday, as some of you guys know. But in this moment, I've never felt more at home. Amen. Surrounded by all my loved ones who watched over me and supported me for so long. So today I thought I would just share the word of God one more time before I head off to college. Amen. Amen. In today's time, our contribution to society as well as our reputation is based on two things. The amount of money we have and the level of talent we possess. Mm -hmm. We often idolize entertainers and the most athletic because of all of the rewarding wealth that seems to come with the talents that they have. Well today we're going to look at how we can use our talent to contribute to the church and to find that in doing so we'll be rewarded by a reward that's parallel to none on this earth. All right. So the title of today's sermon is Southwest Got Talent. Right. Not America, that's the not in country, the Southwest has talent. Right. Good with it, so first things first, all of us have talent. Uh -huh. Even if you haven't found your talent yet, just know that you have it. But why do we each have talent? Why can my mom and so many others make such good fried chicken that brings us wow. together on Fifth Sunday? Well, to understand that, we have to understand why we have to understand who we are. So, I guess the book of could be verse fourteen. Oh, you want me to read it now? <laughs> <laughs> verse fourteen for me. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Chapter 5? 25. 25. Yeah. <laughs> 25, verse 14. Right. Okay, the Bible says, Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who calls his servants. His servants. His servants. Right in the lips, the most important word. Most important word. You know, why are we here? We're here to serve. Yes. And as Christians, we know we're here to serve one person. That's God. That's it. Keep reading, please. Who calls his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. Entrusted his wealth. Why are we all so talented? It's so that in the church, we can be wealthy with workers. Wealthy with right. workers. Right. We need talented Christians in the church to be able to shine the light of God mm -hmm. and work. We are not our own. Our talents are for the good of the church. Amen. And if you haven't found your talent yet, just keep on living a little while. Amen. Amen. The church is a system that God knows best. He gives us our talents based on the task that we are each best suited for. Just like in everyday life, it only makes sense. If you can take the heat of the kitchen, you might be a chef. Well, if you're a good mathematician, you might be an accountant. If you're seven feet tall, and can jump out the gym, you might be a basketball player. Well, the same thing happened in Matthew chapter 25. The master gave his servants talents of gold based on what they can handle. One servant was given five talents of gold, mm -hmm. another servant was given two, and the last servant was given one. And to give you an idea how much a talent of gold is, it's ranging from around 60 to, 6, 60 to 71 pounds of gold. Just the other day, Amir was telling me he's about 60 pounds. So if you lift up Amir, just imagine that much weight and gold. All right. And the first server had five times that amount. Mm. <coughs> well, the same thing goes inside the church. We all have to fulfill our roles. Not to say you can't sharpen your talent, but God knows what you can handle. In Exodus 6 and 7, Moses tried to make an excuse saying, Well, I can't go before Pharaoh. I'm not a good speaker. But God said, I know what you can handle. 
Go take your brother Aaron and go before Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Please read 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 17. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 7, and verse number 17, the Bible says, Nevertheless, each person should live. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 17. Yep. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom or eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be empty of his power. All right. Just do what you're asked. God says that it's not just the law of the land. It's the law of all churches that you do what you're supposed to do. We all have our assignments. And we need to be able to take them on. We shouldn't make excuses. We should just do what we're asked to do. If we're asked to pray, we need to pray. Amen. If we're asked to sing songs, it doesn't matter if you know the words or not. Pick up a song book and make a joyful noise. Yes. Amen. If you're asked to study the Bible, pick up the Bible, grab a friend, and study it. Amen. So for us, we have some needs to be filled. We need some talented, active Christians in the church. There are so many roles and so many opportunities and of knowledge and fellowship to be soaked up. Please read Romans chapter 12, 4 through 5. In Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, 4 through 5. Romans chapter 12, verses 4 through 5. Romans chapter 4. Chapter 12, 4 through 5. I'm having difficulties with my my iPad. Get a real body with some pages. <laughs> okay, the Bible says, I need a body with some pages. <laughs> Sorry about that, y'all. Thank you. Romans chapter 12, verses 4 through 5. The Bible says, For as we have many members in one body, but all the same members do not have the same function. Do not have the same function. Yes. We all have the same function. Do you think anything would work? Do you think the church would work? You know, you walk down the street here, and the beauty thing, the beautiful part about the South and the Art Bridge, you see all these little shops that you just don't see too many, uh, too many other places. You know, we have Walmart now. But you see bakeries, shoe shops, just over there we have a vacuum shop, we used to be a meat shop. But everybody has different talents, yes. talents and when they come together, it works. Same thing goes inside the Bible. Yes. Please continue. In Romans chapter 5. Chapter 12, 4 through 5. In Romans chapter 12, verses 4 and 5, the Bible says, uh, But all the members do not have the same function. Verse 5. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Individually, members of one another. I know we have a we have a number of hard workers in the church already. They say, "Well, I do this and I do that," but don't you realize, well, folk, somebody else's deed, your deed, would it be as significant? And the thing is, we we aren't individuals. We belong to one another. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. So just as much as I'm my own. And I'm a son of God. I am my brother's keeper. Yeah, right. Hey, man. Hey, man. Now let me talk to the adults for a minute. Wow. We have to step it up. Some of us been in the body longer than others. But don't you believe there is a great need in this church for more youth and family fellowship? Amen. We have more youth in this church than ever before. We need somebody to bring the youth of this church together. Growing up, I was able to display my talents and sharpen my strengths, not just in school, but in church. Amen. We had things such as youth choirs, daily community outreaches, and more nights of family family fellowship. Things like the ERLTC program, if you guys don't know, that's uh, what the preachers and some others did over the years. It's great because it allowed us to be with other Christians from all over the same region. Because when we go to school, chances are there won't be too many Christians there. Amen. Amen. 
And in doing so, we, we get to do things like this, delivering messages, reading scriptures, so that when it's time for you to serve inside your church, you'll be ready for it. Amen. Amen. We need more things like this. And it's crucial for you adults that you have your family members here to see the role models that we have in the church. We have plenty of people, not just in this church, but in churches all over Connecticut that can show you the correct way because there's nothing new underneath the sun. We've all struggled. And if you see other Christians that struggle through the same thing that you're struggling through now, you can have some hope and you can get through it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know we can be sluggish on some Sundays morning, but there's no reason why our families, especially our youth, shouldn't be able to enjoy Bible class. Amen. Just sit in there. Because different things happen throughout the week. Being able to talk to somebody like you and tell them about what happened in your week and ask for different opinions. You know, growing up, we may be so one-sided and say, oh, well, the adults can't. They don't know what I'm going through. They aren't in school right now. They're old people. Ooh, but, you know, <laughs> but you know, if they have a classmate over there saying, well, yeah, I went through the same thing. And you know yeah, what? This yeah. is how I overcame that. Yeah, and, in, and in turn, their bond in Christ becomes stronger. So now they know, oh, I have another brother in Christ my age that I can go to. And they build a friendship that will last a lifetime. Amen. Amen. Now let me talk to the kids out there. Hope you all are awake. <laughs> You know, there's a need for young Christians as well. Yes. Our school systems are dark. They need your light that you have from God. Amen. On athletic surfaces, you can show them the way. You can show them that, you know, even though you get competitive and heated, there's a better way to do things. And when you do that, people will naturally gravitate towards you, and you become a leader, not only in the church, but in the schools. Yes. And you can show them your way that is the Lord. The most important thing is don't wait to obey the Lord. You know, as soon as you understand, be baptized. Then you can understand that when you're young, or the younger you are when you obey and study the word, the more chances you have later on in life to show others, to share the word with others and help other lost souls come to the word. I remember waiting before I got baptized and I was like, well, you know, I don't know enough scripture yet or... I'm, I feel like I'm going to keep sinning, so I, sh I should wait to get baptized. I should, I should wait till I'm perfect. No, it's the opposite. Yeah. Get baptized now yeah. and be surrounded by your brothers and sisters of Christ, and they will show you a better way to sin less and repent of your sins. They will show you more knowledge, and they will show you ways to spread the word and show others, the ones that come after, the ones that come after you, how to be obedient in Christ. Amen. Good work, brother. As Christians, we only have one purpose. That's to serve God by spreading His word. So why wouldn't we direct our talent towards that cause? Do we really want to be known as wicked and lazy servants? No, we don't. I know it can be a struggle to get our own family to church, but how about bringing a friend? How many of us came to church this morning with an empty seat in their car? Mm. That could be a lost soul. That could be filled by a lost soul Amen. eager to hear the word because they do not know it. Mm. Share the word using your talents to everyone you know. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you play basketball or make fried chicken. Invite somebody over for yes. some fried chicken and yes. share the word of God. Yes. Uh, what happened to all those in-home Bible studies? You know? You have to get outside your comfort zone and share the word. If yes. you don't know enough, have somebody else come with you. Yes. It's incredible how we can sometimes be selective Christians. Mm -hmm. How can we, knowing the truth, sit down to a meal for our friends and family, saying I love you, and not say a word about Jesus? Mm -hmm. With the exception of a prayer, and not, sometimes not even then. How can we look them in the eye as they, as they travel the path straight to the Haitian world and not share the good news with them? Well, it's not too late. Give them a call. Be generous with the word. Please read 2 Timothy 3, 11-17. It's a little long, but this scripture really grabs 
the idea of spreading the word. Second Timothy chapter three. Chapter three, verses eleven through seventeen. Persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, and Iconium, Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And from the childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through the oh, faith. Right there. From a childhood. From a childhood. You see why it's so important? Yes. To bring your kids to church? Oh, yes. If they grow up in the church, so just imagine how powerful it will be when, they, when they're grown up, knowing all that they do. It's that foundation. When things get tough, they have something to fall back on. Yeah. When everybody else, when your friends and family lets you down, you know that God is right there every step of the way. Yeah. And from that, from childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Good for every good work. If you want to do good, you got the tools already. Yeah. The word is right there. You can you can do it. God said He gives you what you can handle. You just have to go do it. Another version says that if you want to be in the Lord, that uh, the word will find you. But if you hide it, then it doesn't work so well. Just the other day, um, when I was preparing this message, you know, I was busy packing for school, and my mind was all over the place. The tools out there are amazing. So I found myself reading the same line over and over and over again because I couldn't seem to focus. But to, well, today is the technology that's going on. All I have to do is press play. So I just sat there, listened to the scripture over and over, just press play, and then my phone actually read it to me. I know a lot of us have smartphones out there, so it's a beautiful thing. And if you don't, have somebody read it to you. In conclusion today, there are two servants who use their talents to double their talents of gold. And heard the words, well done, you good and faithful servant. Southwest, it's time to use our talents to spread the word of God. And if you haven't been baptized today, Acts 22 and 16 says, Get up and be baptized. Wash your sins away, calling to his name. And once you obey his word, you'll be able to forever walk in light. Even if you sin, you can be forgiven of your sins and continue to spread the word. Thank you for listening today. Today's song of invitation is coming from hymn number 10. So if you could all stand. I want to thank you again for tuning in to the Southwest Church of Christ YouTube channel. I pray that this message has caused you to make some changes in your lives. If you have any questions regarding the message, feel free to give us a call at any time or feel free to send us an email and we'll be glad to give you a Bible answer to your Bible question. Thanks again for tuning in and may the Lord bless you in a very special way.